Hi, there everyone. We are we are we live? We are live. Oh, okay. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the most professional and proper art show on Twitch. And yeah, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> the Bats and Bones art show. <laughs> well, of many bats and many bones, but Something mainly bats, just us. I mean, between the two of us, we've got 412 bones. I... I I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I have way more than that. Fair. I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't have any bones or organs. I'm actually just skin well, full of bats. That's, uh... They manipulate my body. I mean, sure. Yeah. I'm a colony. So, what we are doing today, uh, if you haven't already guessed from the, uh, um... Oh, you have good taste. Title. <laughs> yeah, she's the best one. Uh, we are drawing are fictional crushes mm -hmm. and or waifus. <laughs> Indeed, as it were. I, I admit I have expect Alan to just draw their spouse. But I mean, that would be the easy way out. But, <laughs> here's the thing. Their spouse, spouse isn't fictional. Isn't fictional. Yeah. She is, in fact, very real. Yeah. My, my spouse, amazing. yeah. My spouse, I could draw because she is fictional. <laughs> right, um... Okay, so this is interesting. So I'm noticing off the bat you're going with a relatively recent character. I am. And the way you initially outlined the problem, this isn't going to change what I'm doing. What mm -hmm. I'm doing. Well, the way you, oh, there's a Nendoroid ever. Oh, there is. Nice. Um, the way you initially outlined the prompt, I thought it was like, sort of like, starting fictional crushes, like first ones you were aware of. So if that's that's gonna be interesting. You're gonna be going to um, the relatively recent, and I'm going to be going back to the past. That's uh, true. I will say. Um, I wasn't very aware of my fictional crushes until recently. That is fair. And I will say this is actually probably the first one I started consciously thinking of it as a fictional crush. Fair. Uh, so, you know, all the more reason for you to go recent and me to go back to the past, Samurai Jack. <laughs> Your fictional crush is Samurai Jack? I mean, no judgment. I just, I'm surprised. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is a nice person, but he's got a little too much baggage for me. He does have quite a lot of baggage. Um, can't, can't quite deal with a dude whose magic sword just stops functioning when he feels he's uh, committed to too many... Uh, too many, many war problems. crimes? Yes, too many war crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for Samurai Jack Season 5. <laughs> uh, so I will be doing my uh, chibi art style by virtue of I've wanted a chibi drawing of this character. Oh, that's funny. I was going to as well, um, although more for the sake of efficiency, because I'm going to be drawing two, like some sort of madman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think about fictional crushes for a while, and you know, it is actually like... I, I knew who I was going to draw from the second I, I proposed this prompt. Uh, this was originally supposed to be, like, our Valentine's Day week stream. Yes. But things happened. I don't remember. I was in a car crash. Oh, yeah, that's what happened that I time. I was on a car, in a car crash the day before Valentine's Day. Oh, no. I'm... Man, I, can't, I don't want to just steal this pose, but it's a perfect pose for what I tend to do for my chibi drawings. <laughs> I mean, hey, you're not trying to make money off of it, so... That's fair. Oh, um, my gosh, they make a pillow. Of course they do. <laughs> like... <laughs> like, I understand you You weren't really surprised, but... I'm not. Also... You know what? This is one of the cast members that I know is an adult, so... <laughs> she... Okay, uh... Mm, she's one of the older teenagers. No. Oh. I, I assume legal. I don't care. I only think about her in context of I am also a teenager, so... Oh, oh, there you go. Wholesome. Or, or uh, in a uh, grown-up AU. Because... My point is... It's not the one with the headphones that everybody else... Oh, yeah, who is a on, fucking... like, 13. Yeah. Uh, probably, like... And so, like all anime, it's, like, the the difference in age is, like... Superficial at best. Superficial at best. Like, she's she's younger, but not... Like, Futaba is, is that character. Okay. Uh, surprise, surprise. I'm doing Persona 5. No, no. Kyle, Persona 5? What? It's all unexpected. Uh, I am drawing Makoto Nijima from Persona 5. Um, she's the, like, senior of the of the group. Um, but the one you mentioned, Futaba, is, like, very much a little sister character. And, mm. yeah, she's, like, the youngest of the group, but, like, the difference is, like, a year. Oh, okay. Um, so it mean, means about the same as, like, the Sonic cast ages. Like, you don't think about Sonic allegedly being 16, apparently. Like, yeah. no, he's a blue hedgehog. What? Why, why are we... Mm -hmm. And there's, like... So, it's kind of interesting the, like... How the, um... Like, the, the fandom 
thinks about the characters of Persona because mm. there's like there, there's sort of the two approaches. It's like how you identify with Joker, who's very much a mm. character you're supposed to slide into. He's right. got he's got he's, his he's own your player character. Yeah, he's got his own personality, but it's like I, I think Persona handles that very well, where they are their own characters, but they also have a lot they of, have enough that you can sort of slip into them and be that character. Yeah, um, and uh, that's a bit too fierce of a. <laughs> She does need to be angry. Angry Makoto. Um, I was actually, it's funny, um, before I realized you were probably talking about a Persona character, when you just said Makoto to me mm-hmm. over the chat, um, my mind actually immediately went to Street Fighter, because there's also a Street Fighter character named Makoto, and I'm huh. like, oh, interesting choice. I respect it. Well, if it makes you feel any better, there are actually two Makotos in the Persona series. <laughs> Fair. I hear it's a fairly common name, so. Yeah. Oh, thank you for hosting. Whoever just did. Tia. Tia. Welcome. Right, so uh, the, the different ways um, people sort of identify with Joker is that, okay, either it is I playing this character mm. or I am this character. Right. And, like, do, both both those approaches, when, like, actually with without the use of critical thinking, tend to find the other one gross. Hmm. Because there's a bunch of, like, adult women you can date in Persona as well. Right. When you... Uh, uh, if you identify as you yourself mm-hmm. playing Joker, mm-hmm. it makes a lot more sense to date the adult characters. Yes. Most of the time, the alcoholic adult is, she's just kind of trash. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just bad taste. I'm sorry, Oya oh, yes, stands. I, I don't think you exist. Anyway, I don't want to go off about, oh yeah, the only character in Persona 5 <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um... But yeah, then you have the people that sort of, you know, identify themselves as Joker, and, uh, that, uh, you know, makes sense that you'd be dating someone Joker's own age. And I think Joker and Makoto's relationship is the cutest. Okay, um, so I think canonically, Joker and Makoto just makes the most sense. Hmm. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, and I'm going to go about talking about them in no particular order, so Mm -hmm. enjoy that. Um, first off, regardless of who you date, it's all sort of, like, it's always kind of under the table, because it's really only mentioned when you're talking to that person, not when you're, like, with the group, which is just a, a, that's just a thing video games have to do a lot of the time, especially games as big as Persona. It would just cause a lot of writing and a lot of voice acting that tallies up if you had to have, you know, relationship flags trigger, like, literally all the time, unless you're doing something like Mass Effect, which has a, like, a tiered dialogue system. I mean, like... I, I've thought about this. I've, or Dragon Age, which has like story paths that branch depending on which romance options you take. Mm-hmm. Um, which same person or same same developer, same uh, engine. Yeah. So yeah. like they're they're prepared for that sort of thing. Persona is a very different style of game. Uh, so like regardless who you date, it's again kind of an under the table thing, except for like a, a few key circumstances. Um, I think it makes the most sense that Makoto and Joker would have a relationship like that just because they are both, especially like when they interact act with each other, they both seem very professional. Now they're dorks, but like when they like, when you get to the core of who they are, they're both very pragmatic and efficient people. And like, I can see them just not really getting into it with people they don't have to get into it with it about. Yeah. Um, they're also very, like, supportive of each other's, uh, like, general goals. Uh, and, like, Makoto has a lot of, like, career ambition. And I think that that's, like, a cool sort of mature take for, for both of them. Yeah. Um, my, my sort of headcanon is Makoto ends up becoming a... Well, she mentioned she wants to become a police commissioner. Okay. Um, cops. Um, I... You could probably talk her out of that. Yeah. Um, my headcanon is that she goes on into, you know, law enforcement, but completely destroys it from the inside out nice. successfully. Nice. <laughs> well, Joker becomes a politician and also destroys the law enforcement session. Uh, I would read that fanfic. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of want to write that fanfic, not gonna lie. I would read, the, I would edit that fanfic if you wrote it. Oof. I have so many things to do. <laughs> Me too, buddy. Me too. Uh, uh, Dynasty Warriors mm-hmm. sort of sequel they made, um, which I like a lot. Um, and I've never heard of 
one one just little tidbit I like is there is a, a cop in the the new character cast, and every time they interact with him, and he's like, "Why don't you guys trust me?" Uh, Haru, who is like the sweetest puffball character in your group, just goes, "Oh, it's simple. We just detest the police." <laughs> I love it. And it's like, why don't you trust me? Oh, easy. Fuck cops. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, man. Persona 5 is so good, Alan. I love Persona 5. I know you do. I know you do. Um, I'm glad you do. So, uh, another interesting uh, thing about Makoto is her sister is. In the start of Persona 5 mm-hmm. is a prosecuting attorney. Uh, specifically, she's trying okay. to prosecute Joker. Ah. And so that adds quite a bit of, uh, of drama to the relationship. Trusty Justice crime boy. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, no, Trusty Justice is the one from uh, uh, Persona 4. Right. Nasty McCrimes. <laughs> Nasty McCrimes. <laughs> You're dating a guy named Nasty McCrimes? <laughs> it's just what he signed on the false confession you made him sign, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, uh, adult Kyle also sort of has a thing for Makoto's sister, but mm. that's that's how how fiction goes. Mm-hmm. And she is an adult, so there's no <laughs> worrying about that there. Yeah, there is definitely like some lines there because mm-hmm. like I don't bat an eye when somebody draws sultry art of Mighty Bay Rouge the Bat. Right. Because like yeah, okay, fine. Sega says she's sixteen, but like show me a sixteen year old that is a successful career criminal. Oh my god, Rouge the Bat is 16? Apparently. Fuck. But, like, whatever. It's, it's a fictional cartoon bat, and she gives no indication of being anything other than an adult. Career... If someone draws, like, say, Cream, who's mm-hmm. canonically 6, I'm like, no, no, go directly to jail. She is coded as a child. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's definitely a thing. Like, I was most bring of up. Sonic's crew are very ambiguously coded age-wise. Mm. And Cream Rouge is clearly the... a child. Yeah. Ugh. <sighs> Man, Rouge the Bat, like, though, like, you said 16, I'm like, oh, fucking, here we go again with your anime, like, ages, because Rouge the Bat, like, reads to me as, like, 32. Yeah, no, she's, like, a mid-30s smoker. That is not a 16-year-old. Funny enough, everyone, all of my regulars know I have a thing for A-names, and there is a girl named On in Persona, but nah, nah, she's... I I actually ship On and Ryuji together, because... They're both idiots, and I'm pretty sure they're the only ones who could handle each other. Nice. And I was actually, I was talking to my roommate about this the other day, is they're both idiots in very different ways. Mm -hmm. Ryuji is an idiot in an outward direction, so he just spews a lot of nonsense and very loudly is dumb. So he's the Kuwabara. Yeah, oh, oh. 5,000% the Kuwabara. (laughs) Like, you just, you nailed Ryuji's stereotype right there. Nice. Um, I would like this boy. On is the, uh, like... So she's the, um, uh, I, I, you've seen Persona. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's the, the, the cat mask, okay. Uh, okay. uh, red leather one. So that's On. And don't get me wrong. I think On's cool, but, like, much more in a friendship way. Yeah. I think they could have done some stuff with On's character that would have made me, like, like her more. Hmm. But I think her development is, like, one of the ones that's most hinted at but less realized. Hmm. Hmm. Um, like, frankly... <laughs> The Bats and Bones channel kink talk. She has this, like, dominatrix vibe in a lot of, like... Don't they all, though? The cat is straight up in a good suit. Everything makes sense now. Oh, right. Uh, uh, So, Loopy Fritz and I were talking about the likelihood of us getting a uh, PS5. Mm. Ah, yes, the Kaiba machine. Yeah. Um, Seeing as how, like, you know, the stimulus checks just hit and our tax returns are coming soon... um, like, oh, figure out what to use mine for. Yeah, uh, it might be a good time for us to finally get one. But then we realized money really wasn't the issue because, like, I mean, yeah, my income situation is a little more, you know, shaky now. But I, I, I've had the money set aside since they came out and yeah. I used to get paid fairly well. So, like, I've, yeah. I've been ready to go into it. Yeah, you got PS5 money. Yeah, it's just uh, you kind of have to do things like contract with an eldritch god or sacrifice a child or like so the inventory is still low then yeah yeah um so uh, i'm I'm talking with for some like you know these these sort of things that like i would consider but you absolutely wouldn't (laughs) he's just like you monster which is funny because that's normally what i call him it's normally i'm the monster uh, he's the monster i'm the sellout (laughs) i thought this would make drawing these eye holes easier it made it way harder i don't know what I don't know why I did this. Why did I do this to myself? Iron Mask. I do like the mask, though. It's like, it's, it's simple, but it's effective. Yeah. It's got a little bit of an almost a Doctor Doom thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, 
in Persona whenever they're in the fancy Inception world. They, yes. you know, get magic costumes. Yes, when they're in the Phantom Zone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, Makoto, whose uh, codename is Queen, oh. um, is <laughs> essentially a punk biker. Oh, yeah. is she now? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really trying to I'm find so one that's... Cycle. Like, there's so many... Like, all of the fan art of her riding her motorcycle is just straight up ass out and i'm like i'm looking for one to be that's... fair so is a lot of motorcycle ads yeah but also oh wait hey there's that looks like official ish art uh, i don't think it is yeah so you... no. oh hello brass knuckles yeah she's the she's also the punch girl of the party okay okay i'm on board i'm on board all of the party members also have a special element hers is nuclear <laughs> Nice. So I think the first one that is like outside of the, your typical fire, ice, lightning. <laughs> She's Radioactivity. Got... Yeah. I assume she is very safe and always wears a helmet. <laughs> she can. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Quick, grab colors, do flats. Grab colors, do flats. Pull forward, move ahead, try to detect it. It's not too late. Uh, I was going to say another thing about Makoto is yes. she, more about Marco Polo. she really likes karate movies and like action movies nice. that is like too embarrassed to like admit that uh, in Strikers the like uh, sequel thing that came out you can catch her in front of the theater and she's like the new Yak- the, the new dragon like a Yakuza game came out nice. and I, I like that as being a reference to yes. Yakuza like a dragon. dragon it's great I like everything I've heard about like a dragon honestly uh, I watched all that's uh, uh, yeah, like a Let's Play. It was really fun. I liked it. Nice. Almost done. Look at me. I'm Makoto. I got a mask. I'm a punch you. I'm a punch you. Oh, shit. I didn't grab one with the mask. Oh, Where do I pull great. the color? <laughs> I know. I just panicked because uh, I had a plan and then suddenly that plan failed me. Oh, no. Your plan has failed. Bye. Uh... I'm going to put some more work into this into post because I sh- frankly just wanted to do this in Makoto anyways. <laughs> stream, stream. You just wanted to draw your waifu. I just wanted to draw my waifu. But I am now going to turn it over to best friend, Alan. That's me. So yeah, um, I personally was happy just to be around those characters again. And the plot writing so far, not great. But the character writing, on point. And I'm like I said, I'm just happy to be around those characters again. I don't need like... Big stakes and plot and whatnot. Fair. You say hydrate. I just finished my tea. Ah. That's okay. I've got an electrolyte beverage. I promise there will be a, uh, a purpose to all these stripedies. Yeah, I didn't know you. Uh, your first wife who was a ruler. Yeah, no. You know, <laughs> I just love straight lines. <laughs> I mean, if, I, I can't even liquid. <laughs> I mean, they say opposites attract. I am paid. I require satisfaction. Liquid mist, touch your mouth. <laughs> I love this. For swamp apes. For swamp apes. You know what? I'll take another. All right. Ding dong. Hello, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. Yo. Thanks, swamp ape. Fair. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> you that... know, you didn't have to say it makes sense. No, no, that tracks. Well. <laughs> You know, if I were more self-aware of myself and my inclinations, probably same. Fair, fair. The chat will see it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> see if there's any full body shots I can use. No, I'll just make something up, I guess. Hmm, dumb one from G Gundam. Respectable choice. He has he has good chaotic dumbass energy. <laughs> um, and Swami Surreal says... Uh, the prompt is first fictional crushes. If I could draw, I'd be Misty from Pokemon. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, uh, Swamp Apes. Yeah. It's not Misty, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Alan likes the bad girls. Maybe. <laughs> That's a known thing. Me, perhaps. But yeah, no, since, uh, since I said, so Kyle was going with a relatively recent one, which tracks, because Kyle was ace for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um... I am going with uh, very, very old school ones. Like, old school enough that it's just like, I don't even know if you quantify it as a crush. It's like, IDK, this fictional girl is pretty or something. Yeah. I feel weird. 
She's quite attractive for some pixels. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, no, people people that uh, know me fairly well, like like dear Kyle here, know I tend to uh, go a little bit of thing for, for tough girls, for bad girls. And mm-hmm. um, I can tell which characters planted those seeds and they will be drawn today. <laughs> <laughs> Shame to see that's a saying. I am legit laughing hard right now. Uh, so my are real. Ash's mom was a dime the entire time and we were too young to see it. Yeah, no, Ash's mom has some wolf energy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we get crushes on personalities, and that's okay. And sometimes we get crushes on names beginning with the letter A. And that's okay. We normally solve the problem by just not having crushes on people at all. I had, I, that was my solution for a while. <laughs> it made me miserable. Yeah, no, same. Uh, one of those things like... Big mood, yeah, my, unfortunately. My desire to date is... Honestly, a lot of the times kept in track by my desire to not have to interact with people. That was oh. that was very me for a while, yeah. Although I am getting more social now, and now, but it is being curbed by like pandemic fear. So yes, I, I'm actually looking forward to once pandemic is over, maybe having the social energy to actually try and like go out and healthily date. I don't really know how that works, but I'll try. Yeah, no, you should try it. So I'm also going a, a slightly more humorous route with mm. this. You did a very straightforward chibi. I am uh, setting a little scene. I've got dialogue in mind. It'll be very cheeky and fun. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, starting on details that will surely reveal who these characters actually are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shiny Z-Bats is very excited to see who these characters are. <laughs> I will be putting them both in sunglasses, which neither of them regularly wear. <laughs> but roll with it. Roll with it. Um... They should still be recognizable because these are also characters with very distinct hairstyles. Oh, yeah. I, I can't think of anyone who has the same hairstyles. As either of these characters. I can think of someone who might have the same silhouette, but like with everything else in the context, it should have. Uh... Yeah. Not as, not as Waifu 2. Waifu 1. Uh... <laughs> Waifu 2 has a iconic... Iconic hairstyle. Yeah. And yeah, no, Waifu, two, Waifu 1 is just kind of surrounded by a lot of characters that happen to have a similar hairstyle to her, mm-hmm. which I think is, if I remember right, is mostly like a weird, like, kind of species thing. Huh. That sounds like bullshit anime. I mean, anime. she is technically an alien. I was gonna say, that, that sounds like bullshit anime justification. That's how they explain the hair in Dragon Ball Z. You know, I buy it more in Dragon Ball Z. I, I accept that Saiyans just have naturally gravity-defying hair. Palm Paper Surreal says, I blame the show Tenchi Muyo on my anime problem. I can't believe my partners let me watch a harem anime at 4.30, or my parents let me watch an anime at 4.30 in the afternoon. I can't believe Toonami aired it at dinner time. That was also a very early anime crush for me. Ryoko. No comment. Some comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment at all. No, sir. Nope. Um, well, like, I remember my, my parents remarking on when I was watching it and, like, talking about how it was ridiculous how the, the girls were always fawning over Tenchi. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't be... remember that at all. Little Ace Kyle brain did not, like... They definitely were. But, like, to be fair, it also doesn't have the same degree of that problem that a lot of harem animes have, where the, where the dude they're fawning over is basically a piece of cardboard, like... Mm-hmm. Tenchi's still not super interesting, but he's got a, a baseline personality. There's something there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, Ryoko's in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we've got Ryoko. That's that's waifu number one on Alan's... Uh, uh, Just see if I can word. get her ridiculous Sonic the Hedgehog hair going here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, what can I say? Um... Teenage me saw, well, or very early teens, slash I guess what we would now call tweens, mm-hmm. me saw this uh, this bossy, loud, angry, hard-drinking space pirate and was just like, what is this feeling? I feel funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just think they're neat. I don't know, I just think they're neat. Yep, small moves are real, you called it. You, you called it, sir. Ryoko is absolutely on this list. So I guess that uh, also gives you... Some hintage as to who the second one uh, might be. Uh, Also anime around the same-ish time, a little earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, As far as airings in the U.S. go. I think a little later in terms of when the animes were actually made. As I continue to draw... I I dropped it with Bad Girls. You mentioned it with someone from Pokemon. Okay, fair. There's only so many people in Pokemon that are crushable. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, 
I mean, I, I don't, there, there's some good, there's some good uh, 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 pixel art in the game. <laughs> Fair. James ain't bad either, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But this was, this was before I, I figured out I was fine. No, the the James is nice too didn't come until later. <laughs> I feel like we were getting to learn so much today. I mean, like I'll be honest, like our streams are usually pretty open about our like thoughts on relationships and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, especially because you and your wife have like really great communication surrounding that. That's oh, cool. Thank you. Um, I'm proud of it too. I tend to put a lot of it into my art, so it just comes out. And I, I I will put more of it into my art as I go. I feel like I had a early I want to be him. Uh, uh, crush on James, if that makes sense. No, I feel that. I I wanted to cosplay James once for similar reasons. Mm -hmm. James is nice. James is nice. He doesn't give a shit about what... Well, he does give a shit about what other people thinks, but he doesn't actually change it. He doesn't let it define him. Based on that. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't let it define him. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a running gag that if they're in disguise, he is usually a girl, but it also isn't a gag, because, like, he's fine with it. Yeah. And I think at one point Jesse even mentioned, like, no, no, you, you actually look better in a dress than I do, so go for it. <laughs> that is great. Yup. Like, yeah, no, I think he stopped and considered, he's like, wait, do you want to be the girl this time? She's like, no, you, you actually wear the dress better. <laughs> <laughs> James, Demi Boy icon. Yup. So, I was thinking when I was drawing Makoto, yes. and I just didn't bring it up at the time because we weren't quite in that heaviness thing yet, no. but, like, another thing I like about Makoto in general, and something I trace back to a lot of, like, my serious crushes mm. on, like, real people. Sincere crushes on real people. Yeah. Um, is always, like, I tend to get really attracted to people who are way better at things that, than I am, that I, like, than, than I am at things that I pride myself at being good at. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, which has definitely, with all of my failed relationships, led to some unhealthy mental things. But uh, Understandable. Makoto is always incredibly competent, and I like that. And you're just, like, generally awesome in an admin leadership sense. And I Gotcha. You yeah, respect that. I respect that. I hope by kissing I can steal some of your power. Um. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> but yeah, no, I figure, you know what? Why not set it a scene? Why not draw them both at a bar? <laughs> they would get along famously. They absolutely would. And given that Ryoko's drinking habits are commented on several times... I figure I'd just give her a big old picture. <laughs> give Jesse a more modest cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm honestly enjoying these very attractive TV women <laughs> who are being flirty and intimidating at the same time. Yep, nope. It's a good combo. It's a good combo. <laughs> How much time we got? Okay, I, I gotta keep moving. Yep. I, I'd say, okay, I, I've been trying to think of other fictional crushes because, you know, <laughs> I was so excited for this one, but I really only had Makoto in mind. Yeah. Um... Sandman's death. Mm, yes, death yeah. is good. Death is good. <laughs> death is good. Death is good. Now, Sandman's death is like still. I I would like to say I would date be able to date death if I met death. I think we'd. Get I mean, hey, if Deadpool can. Yeah. Again, his is a different one, but. Different death. Marvel death. <laughs> Chinese Zubat says we can uh, acknowledge emotional vulnerability and then move on. The joys of being in charge of your own dang lives. Legit. Legit. Um, I am going to make Jesse a little more modest here and just have the boots go all the way up to the skirt. <laughs> uh, Shiny Zuba says, we all have a type. This is wonderful. Uh, and oh, I have multiple types. <laughs> <laughs> um, not Surprisingly, not a lot of people bring up that how they're coded thing makes such a difference. Yeah. No, because, yeah, that's, that's kind of what you got to look at with a lot of fictional characters. Not, not necessarily the stage, the coded age. Mm -hmm. Again, especially for non-human characters. Mm-hmm. And I would like to state that, especially because this is fiction. Yeah. Like, um, no, actually, you know what? Let me bring up one that's not embarrassing to me. Mm -hmm. Midna, in her info form. She is adorable. She is adorable. She is adorable. Cody's There's a tiny crush there. She's also got a lot of dom energy. I yeah. mean, like, from minute one of the game, she's starting to give you orders and boss you around. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, no, some people get legit angry about that. You're like, she's proportioned like a child. A, she's a weird elf goblin thing b she very clearly is coded as and acts like an adult i i 100 agree um if anything like the, the 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 age 
between them like feels grosser on Link's side. Yeah, no, if anything, <laughs> she's older than Link. And that's the same game where you've got Telma hitting on Link, and she's clearly in her mid-40s. And, like, don't get me wrong, Telma has, like, the biggest Silver Fox energy ever. I don't remember Telma, but... I remember Telma so much because it was the first time... No, no, I'm going, I'm going... I remember Telma very much because it was the first time, after however many years of Zelda, that there was a plus-size lady in a Zelda game that wasn't a fucking joke. That's great. Yeah, no, I... she was just allowed to be a lady who was big. Uh, small games are real. When Pokemon Black and White relaxed when I was 18, released when I was 18, so it isn't problematic at the time, but has not aged well, curse our ability to grow all characters stay immortal. Yeah, that's that's another thing that comes to you too, and that's sort of why it goes to the whole like, uh, like Persona Five. Do you identify as Joker when you have this crush, or do you identify as like yourself? And yeah, like I see that's honestly like that sounds. I mean, I don't want to like tell you how your brain works. Small games are real, but it sounds like you are doing the like you identify the former. You identify as you know the same age as the character when you think about this crush, but you're worried about your societal implications of the you know, the former. Yeah. Um, uh, Shiny Zubat says, for sure, it's weird to still have residual feelings for characters that are now firmly in not-okay categories, but at the same time, the crush developed it. Uh, the crush that developed it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard to articulate. I agree, Shiny Zubat. Uh, uh, also really weird that Hollywood has mid-twenties actors and actresses play teenagers. Super is, and even weirder that they consistently cast them across from male leads who are the actual age of their characters. Hollywood has a big problem with that, and no one talks about it. Apparently in, like, every language Pokemon is dubbed in, Jesse and James are named after a different famous criminal from that country. Oh my god. So, like, yeah, they're named after a, a different criminal or outlaw, in, depending on the language it's dubbed in, that's famous to that country. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I don't know the specifics, but, like, in the French dub, they're named after a famous French criminal. Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. Hollywood <laughs> has... Shang Zubat says, it never occurred to me that they were Jesse James. Oh, my God. Yeah, I just got that. Yeah, no, that's also why the other team that shows up is Butch and Cassidy. God damn it! Butch Cassidy. Fuck! <laughs> oh, my gosh! <laughs> Yeah, no, they're named after outlaws. God damn it. I didn't... I, mm. Are you going to be okay? Yeah. Okay, hey, hey. If I'm it a make, dumbass. If it makes you feel better, <laughs> Chinese yeah. Zubat's also never figured that out and is having a similar freak out right now. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Chinese Zubat. Bro, bro, you're breaking my brain over here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You and me both, Chinese Zubat. Shit. <laughs> Mind blowing Pokemon. Um, Fucking shit. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Mount Lady. I, you know, I can respect it. I can respect. I Mount can respect Mount Lady. Also, I'm basically done with mine because oh, it's basically time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Look at look at these gals sitting there at the bar enjoying their their beer. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, you're right, it's shiny Zubats. I'm also a little bit loved. They're being mean, but they're also flirting. <laughs> exactly. That's what, that's, that's the thing, that's the, why, why? 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 So this has been a fun stream. Uh, Till next time, everybody, when we will hopefully be blushing at least a little less uh, by then. Uh, or more, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Before uh, Shiny Zubats goes, I just like this quote. Is there any kind of flirting than mean flirting? Mm, something to ponder going into the week. The answer is no. Thank you for watching the Bats and Bones Art Show. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to check us out every Saturday at 4.30pm Pacific at twitch.tv slash knewbridge. Indeed. Uh, you, I also have a, a, a Patreon. Uh, that's that's patreon.com slash kneerbridge, and you can also... I don't, but we're working on that. Yeah, we're working on that. Uh, again, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, if, if you have a second, you know, like, subscribe, YouTube stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. We're really small, and so it kind of actually does really help a lot, so thank you. Until then, I'm Bats, he's Bones, and we're a lot of trouble. <laughs>